My name is Candace Apice. My name is Alexandria Fergero. Ryan McLaughlin. I'm Danielle Weiser. Paige Hawthorne. Michael Mitchell. I do administrative secretarial work. I'm an assistant animal control officer. I am an animal attendant. I'm the animal attendant. And I'm a kennel attendant. Um, I'm a veterinary technician. I'm also the dog foster coordinator and volunteer coordinator for the shelter. At Gloucester County Animal Shelter. Gloucester County Animal Shelter. So I get the dogs out that are a little bit more difficult and can't be placed up for adoption sometimes. I respond to calls of loose domestic animals, dogs and cats, guinea pigs, rabbits. We also handle livestock, things like that. I help clean the animals, take care of them from day to day. Daily routine maintenance to help keep the place running. We're assigned specific rooms. I'm in the ISO where all the sick kitties are. Then I clean their cages, make sure they have proper bedding and since it's the ISO, I always like to give them a little extra. So my role here is basically just a lot of triaging, um, you know, doing vaccines, deworming when they first come in or making sure that they don't need to be referred for further care at a vet. And then I do a lot of daily medications for the animals that do stay here before they get adopted. I mean, stuff out of the ordinary happens all the time. You kind of just have to adapt and, um, you know, uh, roll with it. There's been a couple of emergency situations that randomly pop up. That's one thing about this department that I love. You walk in and every day it's something different. It's never the same thing one day after the other. We've had, you know, uh, times where all of a sudden they say they're bringing in like seven or eight cats within, you know, a matter of a couple of minutes. We've had uh, hoarding incidences. 80 plus cats in a home comes in as a cruelty complaint or a well-being check. What was the other one? Oh! 20 plus guinea pigs on the side of the road. Someone dumped them in Frank I had to catch them. We had a pig on the loose in Defford, New Jersey, I believe, and we actually ended up taking the pig in, and we have a little yard area for, that's a fenced-in yard for the pig to stay in. It was perfectly good grass that was great for taking dogs out in, but this pig tore the grass up to shreds. One pig absolutely destroyed it. So you have to, you know, just kind of adapt and make sure everything's set up and continue to take care of the animals. I don't know that I would want to know what would happen to the community if there wasn't an animal shelter. Uh, without us, like truthfully, we would have so many animals even just like crowding the streets. I mean, you think about places like Italy where they just kind of are greased, like they're just everywhere. It's not really all that healthy for them and it's not really all that healthy for us for them to be excreting everything everywhere. That leads to a lot more disease, which is why so many third world countries, you know, have so much more disease because they don't have things like this. A county like Gloucester County, it's a very busy community. A lot of people, a lot of businesses, you know, going about their daily life, and you really don't want loose animals out in the, you know, uh, public, you know, to be threatened by, you know, anything that could happen to them. They gotta, you know, fight to get their food out in the wild. At least they don't have to worry about that here, because they're gonna get a meal, the bedding, the, you know, the proper care that they need. The stray animals have, need to have a place to go, and try to find them their forever home, because they deserve it. We all deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that having an animal shelter is absolutely crucial to the community because we offer a lot of different services that people don't realize. Not at just adoption, we also have spay neuter services that we provide, lots of different things like that to help the animals. All of us are in it for the right reasons. And the biggest thing that I can say is don't believe everything you read on social media. Bashing an open intake shelter only hurts our animals here. It only tells people the negatives or portrays negatives when we don't get to decide what we can and cannot take. We have to take everything. We have to take the aggressive dogs. We have to take the feral cats. We have to take the old and the sick dogs and the old and the sick cats. I don't want people to think we just put animals down to put them down because we don't. It's not like that. We, there's no expiration date on any of these animals. A lot of people do, you know, oh, you're a kill show. It's like, no, 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 no. We're, it's not all what you, it's not like that. I'd like to clarify the no-kill status or the no-kill shelters. Most of these shelters are places that can pick and choose what they take in, and no-kill also does not mean 
that they don't euthanize at all. They'd have a lower euthanasia rate. In order to be no-kill, you have to euthanize 10% or lower. Unfortunately, you're never gonna have a no-kill shelter. There's always gonna be some times where humane euthanasia, even, you know, I work at another um, vet practice where that's just something that's the reality like you uh, you get to a certain point like we get senior dogs uh you know we get dogs that bond with their one person and then say that person passes away they just bonded with them so much that they are not able to be adopted out you know whether they're aggressive or they just they sit here for a year and unfortunately they go cage crazy so honestly euthanasia sometimes is more humane than them just sitting here which is a tough aspect of the job but it unfortunately is the reality of what it is there's only so many places that want feral cats there's only so many people who are willing to adopt a senior dog we do our best with what we can and i don't think the public realizes that and i think their word of mouth hurts us more than they know the biggest thing that the community can do is sharing and just awareness of the animals in local animal shelters. Even if we're not your local shelter, support your local shelter, support your local animal rescue. If you have social media, social media is the way to go right now. I've had animals that have gone viral and over a thousand shares and that animal gets placed the very next day. Word of mouth, that's the way to get the word out about these animals. You know what? We love the people, honestly, uh, that come in and just be able to take the dogs out for a walk. It sounds like it's not a huge thing, but it's huge for us because we have a lot of responsibilities that need to happen in-house here that a lot of other people can't do. So it gives us a lot more time to, you know, take care of what needs to be done here and we could get the animals, get them out, and you know, get some playtime out there into the world again, and, you know, to be hopefully matched with the family too if they want to get adopted. We have a lot of people that do donate, but you know, the more the better. Whether that's you know blankets because we use that every day, or food, um, those are you know some big things. But also you know monetary donations, just because some things they can't buy that we can. Whether that's you know medications that we give, you know those things are quite expensive, and we go through them quite often with a lot of upper respiratory infections um, and you know being able to buy the vaccines and be able to give them the care they need when they you know pop up somehow heartworm positive it's very expensive and unfortunately you know it's something that you kind of have to say can we afford this and being able to get those donations really helps because then most of the time we can say yes just come on in and see what we got and see if we can find a, another family member to add to your family you know adopt you know, these animals deserve to have a home and to be loved. They didn't ask for this, you know? And all, all we can do, I mean, that, that's all I can do is just give them the love and just make sure they're okay. And, and, I, and I know from my work, I know I, I do that for them because I know that they're happy. Well, to the extent, <laughs> you know? I'm sure they don't want to be in a cage, but try to make it comfy for them as much as I can.